welcome to this lecture. We were discussing about started just discussing about rotating machines, how the concept of rotating machines can be built up mentally ok this is the thing in linear thing therefore, in a confined place if I want to repeat that thing. So, so a rotational machine is necessary and I was drawing let me draw several times it does not matter I will draw it somewhat a slightly nicer way suppose this is the uh, every rotating machine is having some stator and rotor and this is the stator irons which is cylindrical and uh, there may be coils wrapped around the poles and later we will see there are several other possibilities, but to just and if you pass current like this, this becomes a north pole of the stator because lines of force will come out and this will become south pole of the stator. The, the part which moves is also cylindrical with common center with the stator and the rotor structure center is common like this and it has got a shaft and there you can make some slots a pair of slots I have taken which are diametrically opposite which will ensure if at any time one slot is under center of the stator pole other slot will be under the center of the north pole. That is the, the, the these slots are separated by a slot pitch the term slot pitch I have never used till now, but it is very simple to say if you see the uh, uh, developed diagram of the machine that is I think you have cut it and uh, like this and unfolded it in both the sides it will simply look like this and suppose this is south pole this is north pole stator iron this part is this part and in the rotor there is a single slot and since the rotor can move this is all iron you cut it with a <laughs> scissor will not be able to cut an iron, but what I am telling think ok it is you have cut it and unfolded it it will be like this and there is another slot here you will see slot say 1 slot 1 dashed if you call it ok 1 1 dashed these two conductors are there and this fellow is allowed to move this fellow is allowed to move. Now, the distance between this center of the south pole or center of the north pole is called one pole pitch. Pole pitch could be obviously this this distance is also a pole pitch this to this same thing pole pitch or center of this and center because it is uh, circular. So, once again you will see not here. So, so center of this and center of this is also one pole pitch that is from this to this if you go ok you have finished south pole from this to this. So, so pole pitch is this. Therefore, to maximize the induced voltage, it is it is always better to put one coil side or conductor, if it is at any time under the center of the south pole, the other coil side should be under the center of the south pole. This is moving, I have shown it in the arbitrary position. So, as it moves, you can see this if it is center here this is also one pole pitch.
Okay, the reason for placing the two coil sides under the uh, one pole pitch apart, I have explained earlier, but this is how I have done that is why diametrically opposite I have put. Now, what I am telling that in general, when it is operating as a motor or a generator, this rotor conductors will also carry current. Therefore, rotor conductors too will produce field, magnetic field. For example, if I say that uh, rotor is carrying current in this direction, this is cross, this is dot. Okay, this this conductor is carrying cross. This is dot. How this conductor is carrying current? Because we have seen, if it is motor operation, this you must have been excited by a source of voltage. Suppose at a given instant of time, this is carrying current. Therefore, if it carries current, it, it will produce lines of forces like this. is not this is the rule cross this way so this will produce a field and if it produces a field therefore rotor carrying current ultimately produces a magnetic field and if i ask you what is nr where is sr south pole of the rotor this is rotor north pole must be here i must say this is nr why? Because lines of force are emanating from it and south pole will be there. The point I am trying to driving at is to think always in this way that okay, in any rotating machine there will be a stator structure, it will house a windings and those windings will carry current. Therefore, they will produce a field pattern south S S N S etcetera. Similarly, rotor will have slots and there will be they will be also carrying current no matter whether it is operating as a motor or as a generator they will carry current and they too will be producing their own nr and sr and then i will say that okay now ultimately you have got a set of pole existing on the stator structure which does not rotate and you have a set of poles on the rotor iron body this is rotor iron one side has become north pole another side has become south pole and I will simply argue like this, okay, these two sets of magnet then will interact and give you force. For example, in this particular case, you can easily see this NR and SS, this NR is free to rotate, therefore, it will experience a force in this direction. And similarly, this SR experiences a force in this direction. And therefore, there will be a torque applied to this whole rotor body and rotor will try to spin in the anticlockwise direction in this particular case. Understood? This is very that way you look at the things, okay, it will produce a field like this. For example, you switch on your ceiling fan in your sitting in your room, you switch on the supply, what you will see? You will see the uh, rotor of that fan motor is accelerating initially and then finally, it is settled to certain speed. How do I explain this phenomena? 
without knowing much knowing this much I will say ok that motor must be having a stator winding which is carrying some current and it has produced some field N s S s like that. Rotor must be also having some coils or conductors in it and it is also carrying some current and because why they are carrying current because I have switched on the supply they are supposed to carry current rotor 2 will carry current rotor 2 then will produce NRSR and it is ultimately this NRSR reacting with SS and NS has produced some electromagnetic torque and that is why the machine is running. During the transient process when, when it accelerates things changes with time velocity is not constant there, but eventually you will observe it is just observation it is running at a constant speed and therefore, I now know suppose this is the rotor of that motor I do not know in detail what is inside that motor, but with this argument I can say several things that is NRSR has been produced NSSS has been produced and it is running at a constant speed and the interaction of this SS NS and NRSR gives you electromagnetic torque and if somebody says it is running at a constant speed I will demand that on the shaft there is some opposing torque present in the form of friction your blade of the motor has to run against wind. So, that is the opposing force this two initially there was imbalance in this two that is why machine accelerated with some rpm n and eventually if it is running at a constant speed my conclusion will be electromagnetic torque in the steady state developed by the motor who creates T the interaction of NRSR and NSSS. What is T opposition? It is existing in the system or maybe you are doing some mechanical work suppose the motor is running a pump things like that opposing force against which you have to turn the motor direction of rot rotation is set by T direction of T will decide in which direction the motor is going to run and at steady state T must be equal to T opposition it may machine will do find out its own steady state operating point as we have seen in case of a single conductor generator. Therefore, this is the scenario it happens in every machines for example, DC machine three phase induction motor synchronous motor no matter what is this machine is such a thing is going on happening what is such a things that is there must be a stator body there must be some stator windings coils it may not be the stator coils of this kind all the time we will see various of them later, but essentially there will be some coils or windings on the stator there will be some coils or windings on the rotor and it is sub they are supposed to carry currents the moment a coil carries current it produces a pair of poles if the poles are on the stator we say ok NSSS if the pair of poles are on the rotor NRSR who has created this this currents cross dot and I should be in a position to clearly put the arrows of the lines of force and then it is so simple to understand in which direction rotor experiences a torque and it will start moving understood this is very important. 
acha now uh, slightly uh, a neat diagram i will produce for example you, you can now think uh, that stator i have uh, till now shown some projected poles but i can make a stator like this totally cylindrical annular i mean these the, the, these are iron and it has got a length perpendicular to the paper it goes around so iron made of iron now i can uh, say have instead of projected poles like this i can cut slots here and here is another slot so this is the stator yeah, only a pair of slots the, the, there is nothing here it is open a groove and there i can place a conductor and here also i can place conductor two conductors and at the back i have joined them like this this is suppose x1 y1 this is suppose x2 y2 and these two are joined and in front of you two terminals are available to you for playing i mean to get voltage or pump current into this coil and so on now suppose you excite uh, this coil by a battery connect a battery across x1 x2 try to understand some voltage dc suppose therefore current will flow like this and if this current flows then in this diagram i must show it in this way cross and dot in this sectional diagram you must have a clear idea of this thing and this thing current is flowing like this so it will go i have not drawn the rotor yet just to understand trying to understand how the things goes therefore once it is done stator is carrying a current and it will produce magnetic field as you can see like this here hmm? there are several exercises given in your tutorial zero please go through that and we will be often using that so so this is the thing this is how the line crop force incidentally magnetic line crop force will be closing on to themselves so this will be the lines of force it will be created and uh, there will be several of them you, you must understand dot here this is cross current locally if you see it will be like this there will be here and all the lines of force close onto themselves now there is a stator here you have excited the stator coil only and this will be the field pattern if it is a fixed current this pattern will remain there and it will be like this now the question is this stator iron has now become a magnet now where is its north pole where is its south pole as i told you earlier lines of force terminating on the iron part is your south pole so your ss will be here and this ss exist here also here also that is half of this stator structure will become south pole in the same way this inner surface of this stator iron 
will behave like a north pole because lines of forces are coming out from it n r and lines of forces till this point all are coming out. So, this will be n r. So, half of this stator body becomes south pole and half of the other half becomes north pole. So, this will be your n s n r n s this s stands for stator. Therefore, the stator structure need not be like this all the time, but it could be like this also. You can create stator south and north pole. Now, the question is whether the strength of this south pole here is constant around it or is varying in nature, those things we will discuss later, do not worry about that. But essentially, uh, these are the things I can figure out, okay. nothing other than this can happen that is all. And uh, on the top of it, there may be uh, this rotor coil, rotor 2 will have slots, they can carry current, it will create n r s r like this. Similarly, rotor could be also projected poles. <laughs> Uh, you have understood the point I am trying to driving at uh, that is uh, the, the projected poles configurations may be also on the rotor and things like that. We will see now what is what. So, now what I am going to discuss after having this preliminary ideas of the things which constitute a motor, a stator there will be several slots, there will be conductors, they will carry current, but eventually the end result is they will create a pair of poles. Similarly, rotor will have some iron body on which there will be rotor conductors, they will also carry current, they will also produce a pair of poles. And this magnetic poles produced by stator coils and produced by rotor coils they will interact you and give you torque. Now, we will discuss for a general uh, the uh, common underlying principles this let me write common underlying principle of operation. of a common underlying principle of operation of electrical machines, electrical rotating machine. At least one condition is very easy to understand. Now, I, what I am going to show you is uh, this this diagram you just look at. Okay. It is a stator iron, I have for clarity I have not drawn the coils, there will be slots here, here this side, there this side and I will pass some current and half of this will become south pole, half of this north that is understood. This is the stator iron this part portion and this S and N has been created by stator conductors which I have not drawn here and it carries current and there will be field here. Now, similarly forget about this uh, projected pole business I will put it like this the way I have drawn. Okay. I have uh, drawn like this stator, okay. here is a slot, here is a slot, I am pushing current this side cross, this side dot, so that lines of force will be like this. Now, suppose you have a rotor body, rotor body will be placed like this here, forget about this 
projected poles. Imagine this project it is not no projected poles, projected poles also it is fine, it is just like this here and this rotor can rotate. <laughs> okay. So, suppose arbitrary position it is there, you also notice this part can rotate, this part is stator, there must be some air gap in between that is this portion this portion uniform air gap will exist in any rotating machine. So, that rotor can freely move it should not uh, strike the stator iron parts. So, for smooth rotation there must be some air gap you cannot avoid that. So, a stator rotor and this one how this uh, rotor field could be created in this direction rotor may be having some conduct coils here some coils here in the slots and if you press cross current here dot current here cross current here dot current here it will create a north pole. North pole is on the outer surface of the stator south pole is outer these are S r and N r mind you uh, and this is if you allow me I will write S s N s and this is S r and this is N r understood. So, this is the thing and this will happen in ultimately whatever complex windings you are using projected pole or not uh, it does not matter essentially what we are talking about stator will conductors will carry current rotor conductors will carry current and they will produce a pair of poles like this and if it is in this position as you can see rotor suppose I am holding it button by hand this the, the, the pattern of the poles are like this then this fellow will definitely experience a repelling force here this fellow also repelling force and it is experienced a torque in this direction it will try to move we will continue this in the next class.